Now I want to bring on someone who's been a true <laughs> hero and a, and a guy I've worked with for, for a long time, Mort Klein, the Zionist Organization of America, one of the great heroes, uh, pro-Israel, uh, and I got to tell you, a guy that takes heat and incoming all the time. But what was most surprising, what's happened over the last couple of weeks, Mort, I want to get to both sides of this story. Number one, you took tremendous heat from other Jewish leaders of some of these Jewish organizations and some of these organizations about Israel about what you talked about, the cultural Marxism part of, uh, of the BLM movement, uh, not talking about racism, but the cultural Marxism part uh, and the anti-Semitism that's incumbent in that and inherent in that. And then your outreach to Ice Cube and to really start a dialogue that people can kind of come together and, and to work these issues out. So let's go to the first part. What did you actually say about BLM that had so many of these Jewish leaders, this other, I think it's called the Club of Presidents, people really turned on you, and they turned on you more pretty viciously. Well, really remarkable. I simply looked at the platform of Black Lives Matter, uh, not about their push for equal rights, we all support that, of course, but their platform is viciously anti-American and anti-Semitic. They want America to not only end all the police forces, they want America to destroy their military, to end capitalism. They want reparations to Libya and Iraq, can you believe it? They want to end the global war on terrorism. They want to, uh, uh, kids to choose their own gender and end the nuclear family. Uh, and when it comes to respect to Israel, I wrote that they support uh, uh, not only cutting all aid to Israel, but they call Israel a state that's committing genocide against the Arabs, which is ridiculous. There were 200,000 Arabs in Israel in 1948. Today, there are 2 million Arabs in Israel. It's reverse genocide. Uh, whoever's in charge of the genocide program should be fired. Uh, they call Israel an apartheid state, even though 15% of the parliament in Israel are Arabs, uh, and they support boycotting Israel. <laughs> so when I wrote all this out, uh, 16 members of the Conference of Presidents of major American Jewish organizations and leading members, the major reform movement leaders, Rabbi Jacobs, uh, the major uh, conservative Jewish movement, Rabbi Blumenthal, uh, Ken Bob, all the Jewish women's groups condemned me as a racist and demanded, many of them demanded I be thrown out of the Conference of Presidents, the umbrella group of all the Jewish groups. Can you imagine my simply saying, calling out the horrific anti-Semitic, anti-American pl uh, platform of Black Lives Matter? How does that make me a racist? I'm just the reporter. I'm only reporting how awful uh, uh, they are. And now we see more and more how, how true all that is. Uh, and that's why Alan Dershowitz himself came on television and said, this is a disgrace what these Jewish groups have said about ZOA and Mort Klein. I will defend Mort Klein politically, and I will defend Mort Klein legally because he's right. Black Lives Matter is an anti-Semitic group. And by the way, this was echoed by Melanie Phillips, uh, uh, Caroline Glick, and many, many other prominent uh, thinkers and writers. Okay, Mort, Mort, hang on for one second. Did any of the Council of Presidents that condemned you, did any of them go and actually say that you've got something wrong? Was there any debate about what you had put forward as being factually incorrect? No, it was all name calling. They never responded to my, my, my essays were simply factual about what the platform says, detailing it specifically. All they did is call me a promoter of hate, a racist, and they said, I am tainting all of the Jewish leaders by my being in the umbrella group uh, because of what I've written. They've never addressed a single factual issue because, of course, they never could. Uh, uh, by the way, Black Lives Matter also endorses uh, Louis Farrakhan. Uh, and, and when it comes to violence, they say violence and nonviolence are both the same. They're both resistance. So they really promote violence. So, no, the Jewish group simply called me names. And it's interesting. I've written a bunch of additional articles since then. And these Jewish leaders have not said one word. And I filed a formal complaint within the umbrella group, the Conference of Presidents, demanding an apology and sanctions against all 16 of these Jewish leaders for their outrageous lies against me and the Zionist Organization of America. Okay, I just want to make sure you're still in the umbrella group. You have not been you have not been bounced off the Council of Presidents. Oh, no. ZOA is a charter member. We helped found it in 1956. I'm still a full fledged dues paying member of the Conference of Presidents. It would take 80 percent of the members to vote to uh, uh, throw ZOA or any organization out, and they haven't even moved in that direction. They realize it's ridiculous. They've embarrassed themselves. Th these Jewish leaders are simply uh, 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 they're so afraid of the violence of some of these Black Lives Matter people. They feel secure 
if they attack someone who attacks Black Lives Matter. It makes them feel that they're protecting their institutions and themselves uh, if Black Lives Matter sees that they are condemning somebody who criticizes Black Lives Matter. This is all out of fear and also an attempt to diminish me and, uh, because of my political views are different from theirs. They're very left-wing politically. I am right of center, and they would like my voice to not be listened to, so they thought by doing this, that they will marginalize me, but in fact, it hasn't happened. The opposite has happened. We've had tremendous support I, I, uh, erupting I, I, from this. I love you more, but I think people describe you as a little farther than right of center, but that's okay. <laughs> you, were, you were the kindred <laughs> spirit. Listen, I want to talk about your, your, your outreach to one of the smartest guys around, Ice Cube. Talk to us about that and how you tried to bridge mm -hmm. this issue mm -hmm. of the anti-Semitism and how you guys are working together on this. First of all, he told me to call him Cube. I said, should I call you Mr. Cube? He said, no, man, just Cube. So uh, I, I met his manager, who's a friend of yours, and uh, who's an ardent Zionist. He's, by the way, he's a white Jew. Uh, so here people are calling uh, Ice Cube an anti-Semite. His, his partner and top manager is a white Zionist Jew. <laughs> he had Ice Cube call me. Cube called me. We spoke for two hours, two hours. In that conversation, he told me, and he wrote it out later publicly, he applauds Jabbar for calling out black anti-Semites. <laughs> he says, I hate anti-Semites. I'm not an anti-Semite. <laughs> uh, he said, I'm allowed to tell you, <laughs> uh, Steve, that Cube supports Israel's right to exist as a Jewish state. Anti-Semites don't say that, and he said that. He also expressed concern to me of the anti-Semitism of Farrakhan, uh, even though he, he likes the empowerment message of Farrakhan. <laughs> so there's no way at all in way that this man is an anti-Semite. He, uh, he feels he's comfortable with Jews. He likes Jews. He lo loves Israel. <laughs> in fact, uh, uh, we're thinking of getting together and doing a lot more together on, on these issues. Um, he also well, said he's going to... <laughs> yeah, J Jeff Quatness, his partner and his manager, is one of the smartest guys around Harvard Law School guy, been a partner of Jeff's for, for many, many decades. Uh, just a brilliant, brilliant guy. How are you guys, how are you and Cube going to take this forward? What can people anticipate of how you guys are going to try to drive this? I don't want to say things that are private conversations, but I will say he wants to more publicly make it clear that anti-Semitism is as horrible as anti-black racism. He wants to make it clear I think that the Farrakhan message uh, of anti-Semitism, hatred of Israel and Jews is wrong, even though another part of Farrakhan's message is a positive one. <laughs> uh, and he wants, he says in interviews, he wants to make that clear in the future. He even wants to participate in ZOA events together. We've discussed that possibility. We'll see if that happens. <laughs> uh, but uh, I found to be as genuine as, 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 as anyone could be with me. And we really bonded because both of us, I said to him at the opening of our conversation, both of us have a similar background. We both grew up in poor black neighborhoods. I lived in black neighbors till I was 16, and so did he, so we bonded. And when I w went down the Mississippi and was registering black voters, I was put in prison for two hours. So we discussed our experiences in prison, how awful it was. Uh, so we really bonded on many levels. We've already said we want to meet each other's families, we want to come to each other's homes. Uh, it, it was the warmest two hours of a new friend that I've ever had in my life. He's a special guy. No, he's a very he's a very special guy. And so is Jeff Quatnitz as part of. They're very special people. Mort, how do people get more access and find out more about the ZOA? It's a it's an organization I think everybody ought to, particularly people on the right, conservatives ought to get to know better. How do they get to you? How do they get to your Twitter feed? How do they get access to you? <laughs> Telling the truth is not a political position. So I consider myself a rational centrist, telling the truth about the Arafat Abbas war against the against Israel in the West is truth. It's not a right wing position. People should go on our website, zoa.org, zoa.org. Uh, help us financially. Read what we put out. You'll learn more about the issues you and I are discussing. And uh, I urge everyone to join ZOA. Make us stronger. We are promoting the truth of the Arab Islamic war against Israel and the West. Virtually no other Jewish group is doing that. They're afraid. We are not afraid. Uh, and we also expose Islamic anti-Semitism, which unfortunately yep. uh, More, uh, is break. a serious issue. Or thanks. Steve. Thank you so Mark much. Klein, thank you so much for joining us.
here this morning on War Room Pandemic on a dark Capitol Hill. Stormy weekend ahead. Producer Vish, Jack, Jack, Raheem Kassam, and Stephen K. Banner return in just a moment. <laughs> 